Hello everyone, Pentuf here, finally, for a review about the Crane Wagon. I'm excited, even if I don't really enjoy the tank that much for the moment, but I'm still excited simply over the fact that it's a new tank. So, what do you need to know about that fellow Swedish tier 10 tank? There are several things we need to talk about. First, it's gun. It's an auto reloader, so the same principles as the one you have on the Progetto 65. The worst DPM you could have on the tier 10 with only 1.9k damage. An average good... No, average good <laughs> doesn't mean anything. A good gun dispersion, 0 0.33. It's not the best, not the worst either. Let's say it's average. For the aiming time, it's good, 3.3, but that's the least you can do when you have to burst your shells. If you had like 7 or 8 seconds, that would be horrific. The reload between each shot is 3.5 seconds on the auto reloader, so it's pretty, pretty long. It means that you burst all your shells in 7 seconds for a total of 1.2k HP HP as you have 400 alpha damage. For the auto reload time, there is something a little bit weird about the tank. Look at this. You have the first shell is reloaded in 11.2 seconds. So if you play it like a regular tank, every 11.2 seconds you will do 400 damage. The second shell is 8.9 seconds and the last one is 9 seconds. It's weird because usually it's the it should be the opposite, like the shell 2 being 9.38 and the last one being 8.91. Uh, weird, but why not? Why not? Uh, if that's Wargaming choice, I don't know if it's really changing a lot about the tank right now, but uh, we will see maybe in the future, maybe it's a mistake Wargaming did, even if I don't think it's the case. Now, the main problem is the gun. Uh, the DPM especially. Look at this. If you wait for your whole reload, you will have to wait around 27 seconds. You need to add 7 more seconds in order to burst all your shells. So for a whole clip, you will have to wait 34 seconds. It's way too much, making this tank extremely situational and extremely dependent in terms of playstyle uh, to your team. Now, for the average penetration, it's really good as I'm using the calibrated shells, that's why it's good, but even without it, it's pretty good. You shouldn't struggle too much penetrating, and if you do, you can load your golds, which are gonna go through most armors in this game. For the turret armor, that's the main thing. Uh, it's a broken turret in terms of armor. We're gonna see that in the armor inspector with a good view range and a good turret rate. For the speed, uh, the speed is bad. Uh, you are a little bit better than a E100, but that's all which makes the tank not the best to take aggressive positions in the first place. For the L turn rate, it's good, 31, 32 degrees per second, which is enough to make yourself effective and avoid being circled by mediums most of the time, but not all light tanks. But overall, uh, yeah, the mobility and the gun are the main weaknesses. And if you have two weaknesses out of all the three main things about a tank, which are mobility, gun and armor, it's gonna be a struggle. Now let's go in Armor Inspector to talk a little bit more about this tank. So here we are into the Armor Inspector to talk a little bit about the tank. Let's first talk about the hull. If you take it straight, the weak spot is this little plate here, which is 177 millimeters thick. If you try to shoot at the frontal armor, when it's angled like that, it's nearly impossible to penetrate without gold shells. And even with gold shells, you're going to struggle, which means the armor profile on this tank is extremely effective. If you manage to take, uh, for example, a upper position, it means your upper part is literally impenetrable. It has a peak armor, a pike nose, and as it's pike, you have not to angle it. Because when you angle it, as you can see, it becomes way much easier for enemies to penetrate. So when you want to use your whole armor, always make sure to hide the lower plate and only show this, but not angled at all. Stay straight in front of your opponents. You have this little plate here, but it's impenetrable, as you can see, so don't worry, it's not a hidden weak spot. You shouldn't struggle too much. But the main thing here is the armor profile. Look at this. From here... <laughs> It's just ridiculous how armored this tank is, simply because of how artificially angled the turret is. You are literally impenetrable without angling, so when you use your 9 degrees of gun depression on a reach line, it becomes even more of a joke. Literally impossible to penetrate, except on those two cupolas, which are the biggest weak spots. Of course, they are still quite hard to get, I mean, if you don't have a really, really good accuracy, you're probably not gonna penetrate them, and it makes this
this tank literally impenetrable when it's in all down and that's what we love about this one now of course if we take some uh, some height it becomes much more easier to penetrate but even at this angle the turret seems to be impenetrable with regular shells that's just ridiculous and for the side armor it's literally paper everybody will go through like it's the case for every single tank in this game Concerning the equipments, as we have an auto reloader, I go first for the calibrated shell because I don't like improved ventilation. I would rather have a really better penetration simply over the fact that your DPM sucks, so every single shell you're gonna shoot is counting. After I go for the Indian's gun lane drive and the vertical stabilizer in order for me to reduce as much as possible my aiming time in order for me to burst my shells with more precision. After for the def vitality, I go for the defense system because I'm not gonna ram anybody. The Indian's armor because of how strong strong the armor profile of the tank is already is uh, is already sorry and therefore if you use this you're gonna increase it even more making you literally impenetrable finally the toolbox because the enhanced strike is worthless improved optics because I'm not gonna camp engine accelerator because my mobility is not the best so let's try to increase it a little bit and finally the consumable delivery system because you don't need to have a duration of consumable as you are not playing with adrenaline except if you play with the special provisions that were gaming no special consumables that were gaming allowed on this tank but it's not my case that's why i went for this one so concerning the replay we are on mine which is one of the best maps to play your crane wagon with simply because there are a lot of all down positions because concerning the playstyle there is only one keyword being in all down you need to hide the lower part of the hull unfortunately for you you are really really freaking slow which makes this tank impossible to relocate so you need to choose the right position directly at the beginning of the game because if you are wrong you are really gonna struggle getting in touch with your allies and if you are getting pushed there is no way for you to come back to your team so in order for us to take an all down position we go directly to the hill and as you can see it's way easier for us to penetrate that ml2 since we have calibrated shells running on uh, he's gonna rage at us which is understandable uh, especially because I'm gonna spam gold at him for the for the whole game to be fair look at this a whole clip of gold shells straight into the ml2 poor guy sorry mate and so you would probably see two things about this tank the fact that it's really really a slow tank and the mobility is bad but also the fact that your gun elevation sucks it's not something you're gonna see in the first place as the tank is really hard uh, to get into a position where you need gun elevation but as long as you're in all down you are a beast you're gonna see how many bounces we're gonna get this round we are gonna go maybe climb up to 4k 4k bounce damage even 5k if i remember correctly uh, it's simply amazing to see how many bounces you can take but of course it comes with a price which is the mobility so as you can see we can hold the line pretty much by ourselves because our burst is frightening enough for them not to try to push me and my armor is enough to stand here even if there are tank destroyers in the back lane with gold shells they can't penetrate my tank so here we go sneaking some shots at whatever is camping in the back we go for we burst all our shells but even the gun, just look at the time it takes to reload all the shells. Look at this, guys. Just look. It's gonna take 34 freaking... No, 27 seconds. And after, we're gonna take 7 seconds to burst them out. So I can tell you that when you miss a shot with this tank, you are gonna rage freaking hard. In my opinion, having that kind of... Uh, of DPM is not really a problem. I mean, they could increase the DPM by increasing at least the average damage. The average damage of the crane wagon should be 440, in my opinion, but that's only my opinion, and you're not entitled to agree with me. And as you can see here, if you check the map, I'm nearly alone. I mean, I'm with the T124, but the guy is nearly a one-shot, so I'm not really counting on him. So it's me against two E75s, one ML2, and one Object 140. And... It's gonna be a struggle for us, it's gonna be a struggle because with our mobility it's either we pray for them not to push me and not circle and therefore it's easy for us to get rid of them as we can use our main strength which is the turret armor or they start to push like it's the case here and we have to retreat. I wanna remind you that your hull is your weak spot and it's way easier to penetrate it 
than your turret. So here we are coming back to a safer position, but here if they push me down, I'm gonna expose my hull and that's something I really don't want to happen. So I thought to myself, hey, you know what? If you play aggressively, they don't know if I'm if I actually reloaded all my shells and they are gonna be frightened about my burst capabilities. So I'm just gonna push straight in and I'm gonna try to make them move from there and go back to their position and it's working look at this d75 is going running away same for the object 140 which allows us to take the hill unfortunately it's not really going to be useful as we're in a two versus five situation which is turning into a one versus five situation right now i'm against five people most of them are one or two shots but we have a lack of DPM, and you're gonna see why it's really frustrating to have this kind of DPM. We've burst the first shot on the E75, we're gonna wait for whatever is coming to us. There is the E75 on the other side, unfortunately for us, but luckily he bounces. Same for the T-124, we go for a first shot on the 140. Come on, can we kill at least one of them? Yes, we do. We kill the E75, T... Uh, no, not TS, E75, taking a shot in the process. Can we move away before taking the shot on the E75? No, we can't, unfortunately. The problem here is, look at the time it takes to reload. That's the problem. If we had a projector, we could have killed some of them by now and maybe decreased the number of, of opponents we were facing. But here, with 27 seconds of reload time, it's just horrible. Look at this. We sneak a first shot on T-123, but now we have to wait an another additional 12 seconds to be able to reload the second shot. We don't have the time here. Ha I had to take the shot on the T-124. I'm now a one shot without any shells loaded. And by the time... By the time it takes, I'm trying to frighten them. But I say, fuck that. I will not have enough time to kill this 140. I'll die before. So let's just take the damage and die. And that's the main problem of the Krenwagen. And that's why I told you in the first place that it was a tank dependent from your team. You don't have the DPM to sustain alone. And you don't have the mobility to sustain alone on one flank if they try to push you. That's pretty much my review from the Krenwagen. Always being all down, but overall for the moment it's definitely not a tank worth getting in my opinion. Okay, it's new and it's funny because not a single player knows where to shoot on the tank to be able to penetrate you, but it's not gonna last for long. In one week everybody will know how to penetrate it and it's gonna become a nightmare. So don't try it. I really hope that Wargaming is gonna do something about the tank because in its current statistics it's... <sighs> I mean, it's a really good tank when you're in all down, but it's extremely situational. It's gonna be the same as the Badger. When you're in the right position with the right allies, you're gonna do a hell of a game. But when you're alone and your team doesn't follow you, you're gonna get wrecked. Thank you all for watching. Tell me in the comments what you think about this tank, this game, etc. And I'm gonna see you soon for a new video. See ya, guys.